Hello, Internet. I'm Adam Kujawa, the director of Mauer Intelligence at Mauerbytes. Today with me, I have Marcin Kuczynski, the CEO and founder of Mauerbytes, and Michael Osterman, head of Osterman Research. We'll be going over the recently released White Hat, Black Hat, and the emergence of the Gray Hat, the True Cost of Cybercrime report, which was sponsored by Mauerbytes, and talking to these two experts to get their thoughts on the current cybersecurity landscape. The report represents the results of a major survey that we undertook in the U.S., the United Kingdom, Germany, Australia, and Singapore to really to understand the cost of cybercrime and other critical security issues. The study polled 900 senior IT decision makers and IT security professionals about the impact of cybercrime on their bottom line and how it's impacting the organization overall. We also looked at all sides of IT security costs, from budget and remediation to hiring, recruiting, salaries, and the retention of security professionals. So Michael, I wanted to start with you and ask you, what were the most important and, and exciting, I guess, key findings you saw from the report? Well, obviously we found that, that cybercrime continues to grow. Uh, we're seeing lots of phishing, spear phishing, ransomware, and so forth. One of the really interesting things is that we found there was a lot of disparity in terms of how infected countries got. Uh, we found a relatively low level of infection in Germany, for example, very high rates of infection in the UK. One of the things that really stood out, though, is the mid-market squeeze, as we call it. Those companies that are sort of in the mid-range of you know, 500 to 2,000 users, uh, they face the worst of both worlds. They're large enough to have large enterprise types of, of cybercrime issues, but they don't have the number of users they need to spread the cost of their security infrastructure. So they end up paying a very high cost uh, per employee compared to the, what their large enterprise counterparts, right. as well as small companies that don't face that level of problem. Yeah, and they still get hit with the same amount of attacks pretty much as the larger guys. Exactly, they just they face much higher costs. What do you think about organizations that get hit by cybercrime? Is there any sort of uh, correlation between the countries they're in, or what do you think? I mean, is it just random? No, it's not really random. Uh, certainly there are, are more lucrative targets in some countries than others. Uh, but one of the interesting things we found is that we asked organizations about how seriously they take cybercrime. And we listed eight different types of cybercrime, spare phishing, ransomware, and so forth. And what we found is that German organizations tend to take cybercrime the most seriously of the five countries we surveyed. Organizations in the UK uh, take cybercrime the least seriously. And we also found that there was a relationship between the proportion of organizations in Germany that got hit and those in the UK as well. Mm. So while there's not really a correlation between the, the level of seriousness uh, for uh, cybercrime, there, there does seem to be a relationship of some kind. Yeah, and it sounds like, like really they're going after the low-hanging fruit. Germany has always kind of been known as being a little more uptight when it came to cybersecurity and making sure they, they lock down things, right? Yes, very much so. And they've been more focused on, on privacy issues than other countries have been. Yeah, exactly. So they're probably just too hard of a target to go after all the time. In many cases, I yeah. think that's the case. Marcin, this question is for you. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the cybersecurity budget landscape and is it increasing or dis decreasing? Yeah, over the last couple of years, as, as you know, uh, security budgets have been increasing dramatically. Uh, cybersecurity has become a, a board level discussion and in fact all of these breaches in the news uh, I've seen CISOs actually come with articles printed out and start showing the board members and the CEOs of what could possibly be right. uh, that being said you know while security budgets are increasing the the amount of security needed to protect an organization is increasing as well and, and frankly smaller companies are paying the same amount for hardware and software that some of the bigger companies which certainly can afford it mm -hmm. and more importantly 15% of their budgets are actually going into remediation so they spend all this money on prevention and yet 15% is still being used to remediate. So that tells you, you know, should, should this become an issue where protection is just never enough and remediation is always necessary or do we need to reinvest more money into protection in the first place? So with all of the, uh, the different attacks we've seen over the years against businesses, what do you guys think are still problems that we're dealing with? Yeah, I, I continue to see just uh, very low effort attacks that are being used against organizations that are being recycled from the early 2000s. Um, you know, we continue to see attacks that are not sophisticated impacting businesses and, and doing it more severely than some of the targeted attacks. 
I agree. And I think part of it is that, you know, the, these low level attacks like phishing and macros and adware and spyware and so forth, um, you know, really don't take a lot of effort on the part of the hobbyists out there, if you will, that are part of, of the cyber criminal community. And a lot of organizations simply aren't proactive enough to defend against those and train their users. Yeah, I think a lot of the, the threats that have been protected against are ones that are against nation states and so on. A lot of yeah. investment has gone into the, the not so common yet more sophisticated and severe attacks when in reality, the end user is still the weakest chain in the link and, yeah. and are clicking on every email that comes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or the attacks that, uh, that are just getting the most attention. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you guys, uh, kind of generally, what do you think about budgets and retention and salaries when it comes to cybersecurity personnel? And are we doing enough to keep the good people on our side and not going to the dark side? I think some companies are and some companies are not. Uh, a lot of companies are not paying their security professionals enough. They're not giving them enough challenging tasks. Uh, they're just not keeping them engaged enough. Mm -hmm. And that's leading to a situation where we see a lot of gray hats. People who stay in their day job as a security professional but start to dabble in cybercrime. Mm -hmm. uh, we see a lot of that in the UK. Uh, I think part of it as well is that a lot of uh, cyber criminals really are not prosecuted very vigorously. We mm -hmm. saw, for example, only 47 prosecutions in the UK last year under the Computer Misuse Act, and that number has been going down for the last several years. Wow. Yeah, Michael makes a great point. I mean, if, if you put a more lucrative package in terms of you know compensation in front of me and with very little risk, given what we've seen in, uh, thematically in the industry, uh, it's something that you know people do have to potentially consider, given their family situations and so on. Right. W which is odd because in the industry we have a massive sh um, shortage of security personnel, uh, you know, in, in the white hat industry, I suppose, and so we should be paying for top talent and, and, and retention. So we've talked about uh, we talked about the biggest threats to businesses. We've talked about retention of cybersecurity personnel. Um, why don't we leave our audience with just some some information on how their security teams can be most effective in helping their their people? Sure, I, I think it goes back to basics as we, we I've always talked about, which is having a, a solid antivirus in place to at least deter the majority of the threats. And again, that's a basic component, but very important. But at the same time, having a backup plan and, and being able to remediate and respond to these threats, nothing will ever protect everything. And so having a plan in place to, to really remediate these, uh, these, these issues is, is really important. I agree. And, and I would add to that, uh, you know, really understand the, the vulnerabilities that your systems have patch those vulnerabilities on a regular basis and make sure that your users are part of your security infrastructure. Train them well. Make sure that they are aware of the kinds of phishing attacks that they may get, uh, spear phishing and so forth, and really engage them as, as part of the security plan. That wraps it up for our session with Marcin and Michael. Thank you both for your time and expertise. If you haven't already reviewed the full Osterman Report, be sure to download it today and you can find it on our resource page on malwarebytes.com.